Washington, essentially, the nation's capital closed for the holidays. And when they do get back, all eyes will already be focused on the midterm elections next November. Now, the year, it ends with the president in Hawaii and his numbers, as we told you off the top, not in a good place. His approval ratings right now are now just about where George W. Bush's were at the end of 05, about the same stage in their respective presidencies, beginning of their second terms. And it seems like another sweeping issue, inequality, was rising as the business year ended in D.C. The president, the left part of his party, even the Pope, they have us wondering if this may be the issue in 2014. We've seen it played in a whole bunch of mayoral races as well, all of which makes Connecticut Congressman Jim Himes the perfect man to talk tonight. Now, Himes, he sits on the Intelligence Committee. Hello, NSA. He is the National Finance Chair for the DCCC, the group whose mission it is to get more Democrats elected Congress and keep the ones that are there in their jobs. And he also sits at the always difficult to navigate intersection of Wall Street and Main Street. He is in one of those competitive districts. I spoke with a congressman just a few minutes ago. Hey, Richard. Hey, when your constituents, our audience, hears about a metadata collection program, you sit on the Intelligence Committee, I'm curious, is this the price of protection or has the government gone too far? Well, um, I personally think the government's gone a little far. You know, you look back at the uh, U.S. government's reaction to 9-11, obviously a horrific event uh, for people in this area, for people around the country. Uh, an awful lot of money was thrown at, uh, at the uh, security system generally. And, of course, the Patriot Act uh, really dramatically increased the authorities and the powers that the government has to, amongst other things, surveil. And I think at this point, um, because, partly because of the revelations of Edward Snowden, uh, the American public is coming to learn what some of these programs involve and expressing, uh, you know, uh, uh, concern, as did, of course, the, uh, the federal judge, as did the president's panel. Uh, I happen to believe, and you know, the reason I'm a little careful about talking about this stuff is there's a lot of misinformation out there, people thinking that the NSA is listening to their phone calls and that sort of thing. But I happen to believe that uh, these programs have uh, probably overstepped what uh, most of us feel are our inherent rights to privacy. I'm curious, you as a member of the Intelligence Committee, how much transparency do you see? How much do you know about this program? Uh, and how much are, and are even you and your colleagues in the dark? Well, here's, here's the thing. Um, you know, those who think that the NSA uh, or the CIA or any of the intelligence agencies are being, uh, are either breaking the law deliberately or are trying to keep Congress in the dark, that, that's simply not true. They, uh, I, I've gotten to know a lot of these people. They care a lot about their country. They care a lot about abiding by the Constitution. Um, however, we're talking about a massive and sprawling intelligence apparatus here. The NSA itself is a huge organization, and it's one of, you know, 16 other or 17 other uh, intelligence agencies out there, intelligence uh, uh, groups. And, um, you know, it's just very difficult for the layperson who's charged with congressional oversight to really, first of all, learn the technology, to learn the law, and then to just deal with the information that is coming in. I mean, there are literally hundreds of programs out there that are designed to pick up information which may prevent a terrorist attack or which may give us a you know leg up on our enemies and it's just very very difficult particularly since the process of getting that information about these programs is not exactly systematized it's very hard even for somebody like me who sits on the committee to get my head around everything that's out there yeah obviously this isn't in a vacuum the Edward Snowden situation um, plays into this you, I'm sure, saw the 60 Minutes conversation where even some of the intelligence committee, community, excuse me, said maybe they'd consider a deal um, if it was up to them. The president seems circumspect the best on it that would give, in effect, Snowden amnesty if he turned over all the documents and all the information uh, that he took with him. How do you feel about that? Well, look, I personally don't think that's a good idea. And the reason I don't think that's a good idea is because... Um, I don't want the next guy to think that just because what he or she thinks is out of control. And remember, we're talking about the judgment in this case of a guy who's in his mid-20s who had all kinds of other problems in the military and school and whatnot. Um, you know, we just can't run a government in which uh, it is, put it this way, it's at the mercy of the judgment of 26-year-olds. Uh, and so, no, I don't favor actually giving uh, Edward Snowden amnesty. He did break the law. Uh, he did put this country at risk. And it, it, it doesn't mean that I don't uh, think that the discussion that has ensued has not been...
helpful discussion. I think it's important in a democracy to constantly have some sense of what your government's powers are and what it can do. But getting there via the disclosure of highly classified information is just obviously not the way you want to get there. So, you know, what Edward Snowden should do is, 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 he's, is he's styling himself, you know, sort of in the tradition of civil disobedience. In the tradition of civil disobedience, Edward Snowden should say, I think the government was doing bad things. I'm going to expose it, and then I'm going to bear the consequences, which means coming back and standing trial in which, you know, we can sort of hear his reasoning, and, and he can, in the tradition of civil disobedience, bear the consequences of the decisions he chose to make. You know, finally, Congressman, a few years ago, I was sitting down with Senator Menendez, uh, who, like you, except in the Senate, had the responsibility of uh, fundraising here uh, to elect fellow Democrats to the Senate. And he said, I'm going to have to sit down and figure out what I did to get Harry Reid so mad at me. Um, but you have this job now in the House to get fellow Democrats elected. Um, I saw a number that at this same point in George W. Bush's second term, his approval rating sat at the same number now President Obama sits at, and they lost 30 seats there in that year. What are the challenges with Democrats, with health care, with a president that's not too popular as we go to the end of the year now? How difficult will it be for Democrats to hold, let alone take back the House in November? Well, you know, the answer to that question varies by the week in which you ask it. And, of course, coming out of the shutdown, of course, the Republicans were flat on their backs. They'd been hammered in the polls. And then right behind that came the trouble with the health care uh, website, and that hurt the Democrats. So it's a little early to call November uh, 2014. But, you know, I, I do what I do, and I try to help fellow Democrats um, because, uh, you know, Look at what we've seen in the last uh, just year alone. Uh, you know, the, the other party saying we're going to shut down the government if we don't get our way. We are going to default on the nation's debt with the devastating consequences that would have not just here in the U.S. and globally. Oh, and by the way, we're going to eliminate food stamps and unemployment insurance at the very moment when people need it most. You know, I, I'm not one, given the district uh, I represent, that necessarily jumps, you know, headfirst into the partisan fray. But then when those are the choices, when we're up against that kind of philosophy, um, it puts a little spring in my step to try to make sure that people get elected who are about opportunity for the middle class in this country and, and doing right by Americans. Hey, Congressman, I know you've got a busy day here, and I uh, want to wish you a happy holidays. Thank you so much for a few minutes. Appreciate it. Thanks, Richard. Same to all of you. Take care.